In this movie, we describe how we build architectural models of the intact Type 4 pillars machine as visualized in Myxococcus synthus cells by electron cryotomography. Subtomogram averaging revealed the shape of the empty basal body in three dimensions. To discover where the peptidoglycan layer intersects the structure, we averaged random subvolumes around the cell containing the outer membrane peptidoglycan and inner membrane. Each protein component was then located within the system by imaging mutant strands with individual protein either missing or fused to tags, and then calculating difference maps with respect to the wild-type structure. We used these difference maps, together with prior knowledge of the structure and connectivity of the proteins to build the models as follows. We started by analyzing PLQ. There is no complete crystal structure for PLQ, but there is a single particle reconstruction of just the sequent domain. This in vitro structure exhibits a gate and constriction similar to those observed in the Type 4 pillars machine. The same features are also conserved in single particle reconstructions of other sequin containing molecules, including a full lens PLQ homologue from the type 2 secretion system and the purified type 3 secretion system basal body. Overlaying all these structures allowed us to identify the boundary of the sequin domain in the basal body. Below the sequin domain of PLQ lie the N1 and N0 domains. The transmembrane regions of the single particle reconstructions did not match the in vivo subtomogram average, likely because detergent solubilization failed to fully support them. in order to generate a better representation of the sequent domain structure in vivo. We analyzed the structure of the type 4 pillars mutant missing the TSAP protein. In its empty basal body structure, the sequent domain of PLQ pulls away from the N1 and N0 domains, as indicated by the arrows. Since the conserved gate and constriction regions remain intact, and there is no TSAP protein adding density to this region. This structure gives us a clear view of the molecular envelope of the sequin domain along in vivo. Our next task was to place the N1 and N0 domains of PLQ below the sequin domain. N1 is N-terminal of the sequin domain and N0 is known to bind to POP. The difference maps show that POP localizes to the periphery of the mid-periplasmic ring. There is a crystal structure available of the POQ N1 and N0 domains bound to POP. In a top view of the mid-periplasmic ring, we can mark where the PLQ N1 domain should localize to connect with the sequin domain above. Previously, PLQ homologues from different species have been reported to form channels with different oligomeric states, including 15 mers, 14 mers, and 12 mers. In order to investigate the oligomeric state of PLQ in Myxococcus synthesis, we used the SimDoc software to generate 50 different plausible candidate ring configurations for each oligomeric state, and then examine their fit within the density. Here, we show only those candidate ring models in which the PLQ N1 domain lie close to the ring center and the PLP proteins occupy the periphery. Most of the rings tested were too large in diameter. 
The best candidate model was a dodecameric ring, which fits the EM density well and satisfied all the connectivity criteria, including the POP should lie on the periphery of the ring. Since the protein components of each ring system bind each other in the likely stoichiometry of 1 to 1, we assume that the other ring forming components in the system were also dodecameric. Next, we analyze TSAP, which has an N terminal domain that binds peptidoglycan and a C terminal domain connected by a flexible linker. Since the difference density we identified for TSAP is far from the peptidoglycan, we propose that it represents the C terminus. We generated a homology model of the TSAP C terminal domain and again use SIMDOC to generate 50 possible candidate rings. Some examples are shown here, ending with the best fit. Next, we analyzed the PON PO ring. PON and PO are structurally homologous and form homodimers in solution, but once mixed, convert entirely to heterodimers. Thus, it is believed that they are heterodimers in vivo. Two homodimeric crystal structures exist, one of PON and one of PO. The interface seen in the homodimer structures has been identified by the in vivo cross-linking analysis as the interface also used in the heterodimers. To generate a heterodimeric model to fit into the in vivo map, we therefore overlaid one monomer of the pure O dimer onto one monomer of the pure N dimer, reproducing the shared interface. In the crystal structures, the coiled coiled domains are involved in homodimer formation, but in vivo, they must be extended to reach down through the density visible in the subtomogram averages all the way to the inner membrane. We therefore removed them here and represented their points of origin with spheres. Again, we generated 50 candidate ring structures and chose the one that best fit the EM density and positioned the points of origin of the coiled coiled domains on the outside where they could feel the density visible in the average down to the inner membrane. We then added back the coiled coiled domains in their expected configuration. As a result of the different lengths of these two coiled coiled domains, their predicted transmembrane segments align well right within the hydrophobic core of the inner membrane, supporting our model. At this point, it is easy to imagine why heterodimers with their coiled coiled domain linked and extended might be difficult to crystallize. Next, we analyzed the POM which the difference maps showed forms a ring in the cytoplasm. Fortunately, there is a crystal structure of PLM complexed with the PLN N-terminal peptide, shown here flashing in blue, which served as a useful constraint for modeling PLM into the ring density. Again, we generate 50 candidate ring models and chose the one which fit the EM density best and positioned the PON N terminal peptide appropriately to connect the coiled coiled domain.
PLP is an inner membrane lipoprotein bound to inner membrane lipids at its end terminus. And know to also bind PLN, PLO heterodimers within its unstructured region. We therefore modeled this region of PLP as a random coil stretching from the inner membrane along the PLN, PLO coiled coils up to its C terminus, which, as described it earlier, is a folded domain residing at the periphery of the mid periplasmic ring. The short stem density surrounded by the PLN PLO ring was identified by the difference map as PLA. There is a crystal structure of a PLA monomer and the structure of a helical PLA fiber from cryo EN. The main stabilizing force of the helical structure is the formation of a three helix bundle around the first, second, and fifth subunits. We therefore modeled the shortest stable unit of this helical fiber, that is five subunits of PLA, into the stem density. Finally, we analyzed the PLC. PLC is an inner membrane protein containing N-terminal and C-terminal cytoplasmic domains. Interestingly, even though these two domains share significant sequence identity and have been assumed to be structural repeats, when we use the fire server to build homology models based on existing crystal structures, the top-ranked heat for the N-terminal domain and the top-ranked heat for the C-terminal domain were derived from different crystal structures. Both crystal structures were, however, dimeric. We reasoned that while one dimer might reveal the binding between two PLC molecules, the other dimer might represent the interaction between the N and C terminal domains. We therefore used both interfaces to generate a dimer containing both N and C terminal domains of PLC and then added the transmembrane helices in a speculative conformation on top to generate a model for a dimer of the full-length PLC proteins. It has been shown that PLC uses different cytosolic domains to interact with different ATPase hexamers. We therefore rotated the PLC dimer to provide a flat interaction service, presenting both cytoplasmic domains at the bottom to interact with the ATPase hexamers, and then introduced this model into the map. This provided us with the full architectural model of the empty basal body, shown here overlay on the EM density. We next wanted to generate an architectural model of the pileated basal body. As before, we use electron cryotomography and subtomogram averaging to determine its overall shape. Morphing from the empty basal body to the envelope of pileated state and overlaid with the architectural model of empty basal body, we observed several major differences, including an elongated axial pillars that extends all the way through the outer membrane an upward shift of the outer membrane and outer membrane pore complex, a larger POM ring, and a new axial cytoplasmic disk at the base. We therefore adapt our model of the empty basal body and added the new components accordingly. Starting at the bottom, the difference maps identified the new cytoplasmic disk density as the ATPase PLB. A crystal structure of PLB hexamer is available, but it only contains a partial representation of the N-terminal domain that binds to PLM. We highlight that position within PLB here with green spheres. Orienting PLB to fit best within the EM map positions it flat against the cytoplasmic domains of PLC in compliance with their known interaction.
from the top view, it is clear that pill M ring of the empty basal body is too small to accommodate the pill B hexamer. This is no surprise, since the pill M ring is clearly larger in the pileated subtomogram averages. It is also known that the N-terminal domain of pill B, marked here with green spheres, binds to pill M. Fortunately, the crystal structure of a complex of pill M with the pill B N-terminal domain is available. Superposing it onto the smaller empty basal body pill M ring structure, we saw that the pill B binding pockets of pill M are completely buried within the ring. We mark the known pill B binding pockets of every other pill M in the ring with yellow spheres. Reintroduce the pill B structure with N terminal domains marked by green spheres and compared 50 new candidate pill M ring structures looking for candidates that matched the enlarged EM density, accommodated the POB hexamer, exposed the POB N-terminal binding pocket, presented the POM peptides toward the inner membrane as required for them to connect with the transmembrane coil-to-coil domains, and finally co-localized the yellow and green spheres. Having identified the best fitting candidate, we then added back the structure of the POB and terminal domains. In this configuration, the PON and terminal peptides are close to the inner membrane, but they are further away from the axis than they were in the empty basal body. We therefore shift the coiled coil structures outward which had the effect of opening the coiled coil domain cage, in agreement with its reduced visibility in the subtomogram average of the pileated state. We shifted the outer membrane and outer membrane pore structures up to match their densities in the pileated envelope, and finally extended the PLA helical fiber until it protruded through the outer membrane. As the pillars must displace the gate density as it passes through the screen domain, we removed the gate from the model. This provided us with an architectural model of the pileated type 4 pillars machine. Shown here overlay on the EM density, and in a side-by-side -side comparison with the empty state.